All right, everybody. It's been quite some time since we talked lacrosse on the channel, but we are here today to talk about it, man. Um, unfortunately for the New York Riptide, rest in peace. Your season ended on the last day of the regular season, and your time in New York is now over. So you will be going to Ottawa without a playoff appearance. So it is unfortunate. Um, man, what a season for the NLL. The balanced schedule made things a lot more interesting than I think it would have. You know, and a lot of people, you know, there's, there's maybe like one or two people that complained, you know, well, oh, there's too many teams out east that got, you know, in. I saw that yesterday. Um, man, what a season. I was able to go to a Panther City game this year. And I had a hell of a lot of a good time. I know, you know, people are talking about, well, what about Rochester? Are they moving to, like, Grand Rapids? No. I mean, I get it because the Sabres owner who owns, you know, a bunch of guys, Pegula or something like that, he owns a bunch of teams and everything like that out in the uh, New York area. And it's like, you know, you might be trying to sell teams off or whatever, but who cares about all that right now? What, what matters right now is that we got a nice, nice matchup between Rochester and Toronto to start us off on Saturday. You know, that'll be on TSN, big TSN. Georgia Buffalo is going to be on ESPNU. Of course, Panther City gets the ESPN Plus treatment. I'm not happy about that. And they go against the team that I saw them play in San Diego, an absolute juggernaut of a unit. Toronto also an absolute unit with Nick Rose and everything like that, and they've just been playing Lights out this year, 15-3. and three. Um, And then Sunday will be the Halifax-Albany game. Um, and we all know why that game is on Sunday now. Um, thanks, AFL 3.0. But whatever. You know, and this is going to be a really intriguing, a really intriguing, you know, quarterfinals because you have a Rochester unit that you know I don't I don't know if people are like you know I don't know if people are like you know doubting them or anything like that but honestly you know should they have been here I don't know man I don't know but 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 it's whatever you know Connor Fields has been red hot red hot MVP type guy you know, if it you know, if it weren't for guys like T, you know, whose season's now over, or Nick Rose or anything like that, like this is an absolute unit for Rochester. You know, they were able to get in and they did 10. And I don't know. I don't know if it's going to be enough against, you know, Toronto, because Toronto's a really good team themselves, but uh we'll see. We will see, man. We will see, and you know they got they got again, you know the Rock are a pretty good unit offensively. Tom Schreiber being one of those guys as well. So I don't know, I don't know. This is going to be a tough one to predict, you know, because like again, Connor Fields has been otherworldly the past few weeks, otherworldly type stuff. So I don't know. A lot of people are also going to underrate, you know, maybe the Albany Firewolves with Ty Kurtz, Alex Simmons, you know. I mean, this is, I mean, this is just an absolute pretty – this is a pretty good Albany unit. Um, they had a losing streak at some point, you know, that was like five of their last six, but they, they were able to rebound by beating New York, you know, this past weekend. And, I mean – you know, a lot of people are saying, well, Albany's not that team. They're not that good, yada, 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 yada. But they they earned the three seed for a reason. They earned the three seed for a reason. So we'll see what in the world can the Firewolves do. Um, Tracy Kaluski's, you know, Panther City Lacrosse Club is another team that may or may not, you know, you know be as, you know, definitely a very good team. You know, but again, this is a stacked San Diego unit. That's the problem, though. And like, you know, my my prediction of Colorado, Toronto, Buffalo, San Diego, that kind of fell by the wayside a little bit. And even Buffalo's, you know, 
fell off a little bit this year you know, with them being, you know, 11 and seven and everything like that. But, you know, they were able to rebound with four straight wins after being seven and seven and, you know, getting guys, you know, back. So I don't know. I don't know. And of course, Georgia, you know, with that unit led by Lyle company, uh, I don't know. It, that that game is probably going to be the, this is probably Georgia Buffalo is probably going to be the best game of the quarterfinals. To be completely honest with you, and remember these are just single elimination games. There's no best of threes, nothing like that. Remember the playoffs in the NL also end before June. That is also one thing. So they will end that you know Memorial Day weekend. So that's going to be one thing that you know is going to be really intriguing to follow. That you know. How are we gonna get? How are we gonna get there? Because I mean, again, you know, like Toronto's an absolute unit, San Diego's an absolute unit. You know, Buffalo, Albany, Georgia, you know, Halifax too. And I don't really talk. I don't, I don't think anybody's really talked about Halifax. You know, with Warren Hill in the cage, Cody Jamison. I don't know if anybody's really talked about them guys, but hey. They 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 got they got something they got some spunk so I'll give them that. But yeah, the quarterfinals are going to be very intriguing. I'm going to be watching at least three of these games. I don't know how I'm going to be able to watch the Panther City game. You know, I'm just sorry. I'm, I'm just sorry. I just don't know how with the ESPN Plus thing. So there's that. Um, in college across, however, you know the conference tournaments are set up, ready to go. You know. Uh, I want to talk the ACC first because, um, yet again, I watched Notre Dame, um, watched Notre Dame, North Carolina. I watched this sorry North Carolina team that I know, I know they're injured and everything like that. But I mean, you you just can't let you just can't let the Kavanaugh boys, you know, do whatever they want to do on them. You just can't let them do that. Like, are, are we being serious right now, man? Are we being serious? You know, um, it still feels like it's Notre Dame and everybody else right now. That's just what I feel like at this point. That's just what I'm thinking because it's like Notre Dame has, you know, lost the Georgetown. They have they lost the Georgetown, and that's it. But it's like at the same time, you know, they've been playing absolutely lights out, you know, a team like Virginia or Duke, you know, they, they are also in the ACC and they also Duke Duke might not get to the ACC tournament if they lose to North Carolina this weekend. But I don't think they will if they, as long as Duke doesn't lose to North Carolina this weekend. And that's what I was thinking, you know, because North Carolina is six and seven, Duke is 11 and three. As long as, you know, nothing happens, to Duke, I think they'll be fine. They'll go to the ACC tournament, and they will, you know, take care of business. Yeah, no, they, all they got to do is beat Virginia, and they will take their talents, you know, the ACC tournament with an unbeaten record. But Fighting Irish will. Um, Virginia, yeah, Cormier, Schellenberger, and the whole crew, they're still they're still in a good position, you know, at ten and three. But I think you know Notre Dame's going to win the ACC, and ultimately, I think unless something happens, because Duke just looks, you know, Duke has looked anemic at times this year themselves. And I, I'm going to use the term anemic a lot. Um, Duke, you know, has been trying to go through O'Neill, but it hasn't been working as well as I thought it would be. And Syracuse is an absolutely scrappy team. That knows how to win. You know, they've had a couple of heartbreaking losses, but they know how to win, and they are definitely going to go far in this tournament. Um, the America East, absolute crapshoot right now. I do not, I do not care. I do not care because you know it's a one bid league. A Sun, same thing, one bid league. Maybe look out for either Jacksonville, Utah, Air Force, or maybe even Bellarmine. Um, in the 810, it's a race between St. Joe's and Richmond. Richmond, definitely an underrated team. St. Joe's also definitely underrated. The Big East, it comes down to Denver and Georgetown yet again. Uh, 
Now, Georgetown lost to Denver, so, you know, that's one big thing. And, of course, the Big Ten, Hopkins, very good defense, really good defense. Penn State, you know, they had a loss in there, and then they had a couple other losses to where they couldn't finish. But, yeah, Penn State's in a good position. Maryland, I don't buy them as, you know, like some projections have them, like, seeded. I don't really buy them being seeded. I I do buy them being in. I think they have a tournament resume, but I don't think that the way that offense has looked, they have nobody. They have nobody, and I've seen it on multiple occasions this year. Virginia game, Hopkins, uh, I I just don't see it this year. I really don't. Um, Ohio State is absolutely garbage. Rutgers is not good. Michigan is okay. So really, I would take, you know, either Hopkins or Penn State, and I'm more so take Hopkins with that defense. CAA, it's going to come down to Towson and Delaware. They're both unbeaten in CAA play. They will play each other. Um, you know, the Ivy League is, and is I don't even know what the Ivy League is right now. Like, Cornell played Notre Dame to the absolute limit, and yet they still lost. So, an absolute crapshoot in the in the Ivy League right now because you know, you know, it is what it is with the Ivy League. I, I like it's gonna be Yale, Cornell, Princeton, and and now Brown is still in it too. So, uh, last week of the regular season, you know, for most for most teams anyway, you know, some teams have started conference. Some teams are gonna start conference tournaments like the Big Ten and everything like that and the Mac as well. They're going to start conference tournaments. Sacred Heart, you better watch out. Watch out for the Pioneers. They went unbeaten in conference play at 9 and 0. the Patriot, oh, don't even don't even get me started on my Patriot League. Army, you know, has to win the AQ. They lost two games in conference play and the whole Patriot League as a whole has been entertaining as hell to watch. We still got we still got another week of games to go, and there's going to be some games this upcoming Friday and Saturday and stuff like that. That's going to really take shape of this race because everybody is still in it. Or rather, yeah, this this team's still in this thing. You know, uh, I think our top six are set though for the Patriot League tournament. So Army, Colgate, Boston. Lehigh, Loyola, and Navy. I think those are our six. So, yeah, and that Army defense is also very, very good. Like, do not, do not underestimate it at all. And last but not least, the PLL schedule has been officially revealed. Um, that has been officially given out, and it's up. And everything We've got teams with bye weeks now. Teams have bye weeks. Teams. Um, Sometimes play two games in one weekend, you know, and that's all good and dandy. I mean, there's just it's 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 absolutely beautiful. We know at least five games are going to be televised in that first month of the season. Remember the 22nd, the weekend of the 22nd, there won't be any games, but um, the first weekend going to be an ABC game, I think. I hope there's two and. I mean, still some games that need to be determined for their times and everything like that, but so far, so good. Again, I don't have a team in the PLL anymore. Um, so, so far, so good. It's going to be a damn good season in the Premier Lacrosse League, I think, because of the way things are set up. Remember, the divisional setup this year, you know, so the quarterfinals, it's just going to be two games instead of three. So the top six teams, three from each of the um, the, the conferences are going to, you know, show down in, you know, the same old spots that the PLL usually goes to, which will culminate in Philadelphia as usual. So PLL schedule's out. I'm happy about it. I just need, you know what games I'm going to be able to watch on television because, you know, I don't have ESPN Plus. I'm sorry. I'm not, get, I'm not getting the ESPN Plus. You're not going to make me do it. I'm not going to do it. So that'll do it for me, talking lacrosse. Um, honestly, I still have, you know, uh, you know, unless, you know, you know, I don't have a top four of, you know, 
since Colorado, you know, absolutely just went, they were terrible this year, but like, I think San Diego wins the NL Cup, the Champions Cup this year. That's what I'm thinking. So um, if you don't like that, I don't know what to tell you. I think the San Diego unit is absolutely goaded. Just studs all around like that. Like the, the guys on that list alone, you know, make up a whole starting six. So that'll do it for me. Talking lacrosse anyway, I'll see you again on the Monday after Selection Sunday, so in about two weeks or so, and we'll talk, you know, everything from the Big Ten tournament, ACC tournament, uh, Ivy League tournament, which is going to be crazy, the Patriot League tournament, which is going to be crazy. I mean, all those tournaments are going to be crazy. Um, yeah, so cannot wait to talk after, you know, conference championships after the quarterfinals, which I'm going to be heavily watching in the NLL and everything like that. So, again, that'll do it for me. I'll take care, and I'll see you soon with whatever's next.